I worked on so many shows in the last three years, ranging from Power to Pose to Mr. Robot, just to name a few. I've worked on tons of shows. And the reason why I've been able to keep being employed and keep having a job is because I've networked with people and they just throw my number around and they they recommend me to other ADs and to other keys and that's how I've always been able to keep a job and that's why I'm stressing to you guys the importance of networking. Today we are going to be talking about how to be the perfect, not just the perfect, but the absolute best PA that you can be on set. If you are asking me what a PA is, this video is probably not for you. But if you know that a PA is a production assistant for television and film, continue to watch. Okay, I got my notebook here because I wrote things down. This is serious business. I wrote down five ways that you can be not only a great PA, but the best PA. <laughs> so let's start with number one. Be on time. I mean, let me repeat that for you so that you like you understand because I don't think you understood. You need to be on time. It is super important for a production assistant to be on time to set, just as it's important for any employee to be on time to work. But when it comes to filmmaking, when it comes to television, when it comes to movies, time is money, literally, because the production is paying for the location that you're at, the stage that you're at. So you have to be on time. If you're not on time, not only does it reflect badly on you, but it can mess up your whole team. You are working with the ADs, you're in the AD department. So everything that happens it's kind of a ripple effect if you're late doing something then something will get affected by it so it's important for you to be on time I cannot stress that enough and that's why I put it as number one because if you're late even just five minutes late your key PA will take notice of it and they will hold that against you unfortunately it's kind of petty but it's like it actually makes sense and it matters because again time is money on a film set so be on time okay once you're on time and you show up, you're already like half the battle is already won. Um, but a part of being on time is also being available to work. And by being available to work, I mean being available to work the entire day. A lot of the times you can shoot for 12 hours, you can shoot for 14 hours, you can shoot for 16 hours. It's three o'clock right now. Fucking exhausted. Do you see my face? I should not be up right now. Mm -mm. You need to be available for that entire time period. And if you're not available for that whole time period, it's just not going to work for you. It's just not because you can't say, hey, it's been 10 hours and I have to go. That's not going to work. You need to be available for the entire course of the shooting day. That might seem like common sense, too, but for some people, it just does. Some people just don't understand that you have to be available for the whole day. Number two, the second most important thing for you to do in order to be an amazing, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, standout PA. This is actually one of the probably most important part. Read the call sheet. I'm gonna say it again, just in case it didn't click for you. I'm gonna say it again. Read the call sheet. <laughs> Your ADs will thank you. Your crew will thank you. A lot of the questions that I've had on set comes from the fact that I didn't read the call sheet. I'm guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. You're supposed to get the call sheet. Not only is it going to tell you what time to be on set, it's going to tell you literally everything. It's going to tell you down to the what weather it's going to be for the day. It's going to tell you everybody that's going to be on set, their names, their positions. It's going to tell you what scenes you're filming that day. It's literally your Bible. It's the Bible for the set like more or less so make sure you read the call sheet read the call sheet before you ask a question because most likely your answer is on the call sheet a lot of my friends who are ad's or keys they always tell me how they know what a professional production assistant is versus a someone that's new because they'll ask questions that they have the answers on the call sheet for so this is the cheat code i'm telling you read the call sheet so now that you're on time, you're prepared mentally because you read the call sheet. The third important thing to do on set is to communicate. And the reason why I stress this point is because communication is literally the backbone of the AD department. If you're not communicating what's going on, it can have a ripple effect. If you know that something... Let me fix my camera. There we go.
you need to make sure that you're constantly communicating on your team. You are a part of the AD department, which means that you need to be using your walkie. When I started out as a PA, I was honestly afraid to use my walkie. Like I didn't really know how to use it and I didn't like the sound of my voice on it. I just didn't, I don't know, I had a weird thing with the walkies. But if I had gotten out of my head more and used my walkie, I'm sure I could have avoided a lot of things that happened. So make sure you're always communicating over communicate sometimes if you have to and make sure that people are comprehending what you're saying over the walkie as well make sure you copy other people you know if your ad says something over the walkie make sure you copy her or him hopefully it's a her because we want more women filmmakers out there but you know that's not here or there <laughs> point number four ask if you're unsure if you have a question ask just ask, there's no stupid questions. It might feel like it's a stupid question to you, but it's probably not. If you don't know something, ask. They know that you're a PA. They know that you're a production assistant. This is probably your first couple of jobs. You're new to the industry. So it's okay to ask a question. If you don't know what something means, Google it first, maybe, you know? Use your common sense in a lot of areas. You can you can think for yourself, but it's okay to ask people questions. You're not gonna have the answers to everything. You're not gonna know everything. You're new. That's the whole point of you being there. So it's okay to ask questions, but I caution you, use your common sense. Just use your common sense and you'll be fine. The fifth and last thing I'm going to share with you guys, some advice that I have for you guys, is to network. The reason why you're there is to make connections with people, is to network with people so that you can continue to work in the industry, right? It's important to remember why you're there. You're there to learn, you're there to network, you're there to uh, meet new people and to talk to people and to figure out the things that you might like. So make sure you're networking, make sure you're talking to everyone, say hello to everyone, you know? The way I've been able to keep a job, I've worked on so many shows in the last three years, ranging from Power to Pose, to Mr. Robot, just to name a few, I've worked on tons of shows. And the reason why I've been able to keep being employed and keep having a job is because I've networked with people. Also, another point to that I'd say is to find out from early what you're interested in. Unless you're trying to be an AD, you shouldn't really have to be a PA for too long, you know? Unless that's your, like you're trying to get your days in so that you could become an AD and assistant director. Try to pivot into the the category category career career um yeah try to pivot into the career that you want within film Bruh. um and what i mean by this is talk to everyone talk to the people in the camera department talk to the props department the locations manager so that you can kind of get a feel for what their job is like and you can kind of figure out what you want to do in your industry do you want to work in locations or do you want to work as in set dressing do you want to be a director or writer kind of figure that out early on so that you aren't wasting your time just being a PA not that that's a waste of time but if you're not trying to be an AD or work in the AD department try to get out of it as quickly as, as you possibly can once you understand how a set works and you know the ins and outs of it and yeah that's my advice those are the five tips that I have for being an incredible amazing the best PA on set be on time use your walkie and communicate read the call sheet, ask questions, and network. Do all five of these things and I promise you, you won't be a PA for long. You'll learn a lot, you'll network and communicate, and you'll always have a job. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment below, and I'll be sure to answer it as quickly as I can. And thank you guys so much for watching and good luck.